Good morning, everyone. It's early in the morning, and I am headed for about a one and a half hour, maybe two hour drive to Devil Tower. Oh, you're going to get the camera. Good she lives in the bar that don't know her name. Down, down below, where are all the Alright, so we're almost at Devil's Tower and we've uh, stopped for a picture moment and there's a little placard over here about Devil's Tower. It's just amazing how it's just out there by itself. No other big rock around like that. So I'm very interested to find out how that came to be and the history. Devil's Tower, although Devil's Tower has long been a prominent landmark in northeastern Wyoming, the origin of the Mammoth Rock obelisk remains somewhat obscure. Well, that answers my question. Geologists agree that Devil's Tower consists of molten rock forced upwards from deep within the earth. Debate continues, however, as to whether Devil's Tower is solidified lava from the neck of an ancient volcano, the walls of which eroded long ago, or whether as a sheet of molten rock which was injected between rock layers. The characteristic furrowed columns are apparently the result of uniformly arranged cracks which appeared during the cooling of the volcanic magma. Geologic estimates have placed the age of Devil's Tower at greater than 50 million years. Wow. Okay, everyone, I'm here at Devil's Tower and I got my RV set up all parked. She's over the sidewalk a little bit. I got here early, which is nice, because look, there's a big old bus coming in. I'm just going to do a 1.3 mile loop, and Lily is not allowed on the trail, so it's just going to be me. The tower is held sacred by many American Indians and highly regarded by other people's respect this place by staying on trails. Agreed. Alright, here we go. Oh, it's nice and cool. Boy, it's so close. Let's go look at the boulder field. Wow. It's a nice little trail through here. I love this like craggly old tree. That's incredible. Gosh, I know I'm so silent because I'm just taking in the beauty. Boulder field from here. You can see, like, there's a red cloth on that tree. That is part of the prayer cloths from the Indians. They're supposed to be sacred. I shouldn't say supposed to be. They're sacred, and you're not supposed to touch them. Oh my gosh, look at the river. That's the Bella Forche River. All these beautiful pine trees and the boulders below. I cannot believe just how beautiful this is. It seems like every place I go to, I say this is beautiful, and I can't believe that anything could be more beautiful than this, but then I'm surprised at every next step of the way. What is amazing to me is the formation of the rocks where it's got like stripes going down. You can see more of the fire out here. Just look around the corner. 
and this one you can see like the scorched areas as well. And look, see how the spark has come off. And then up, up, up. It lopped at its trunk. And then its little branches are all burned. Look at this. Looking at him. When I came here this morning, this parking lot was not even full, and now look at it, it's completely full. So it happens quickly. Unfortunately, I lost some video leaving Devil's Tower to Spearfish, South Dakota. However, I wasn't there long. I had planned a whole week of scenic routes in South Dakota, but temperatures were rising quickly into the mid-90s, and I decided to head northeast quickly into North Dakota. I decided this at the last minute and had only hours before the sun would start to drop, so I quickly packed up from Spearfish, South Dakota, gassed up the RV, and headed due north on US Route 85. US Route 85 turns out to be a very long, long two-lane road with absolutely nothing around. It was starting to get dark, and I don't like driving in the dark, but my destination, a small truck stop in Bowman, North Dakota, was in sight, and I was ready to get settled after the winds were knocking me around all the way from South Dakota. Join me in the next video as I continue east to Minnesota for cooler weather, only to experience 30 mile per hour winds, a tornado watch, and yes, flying grocery carts.